Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, midweek supplemental. This is episode number 165, a nice clean round number. I was going to say even number, but it's not even. Uh, so here we are at the Knife Junkie midweek supplemental. This is my chance to talk about uh, knives in my collection, new knives out in the uh, in the knife world, and just uh, do a little bit of housekeeping uh, with channel stuff and podcast stuff. And uh, well, to start off, I want to talk about this past Saturday's uh, town hall. It was our fourth town hall. Uh, this is not by design, but it kind of turns out that they're they're happening quarterly. Uh, these town hall meetings. And what we do is bring on knife makers and uh, manufacturers and, you know, guests of the show, guests of the podcast. And uh, we talk to them for about a half hour. People can ask questions through the comments or even come on. Yesterday we had, uh, on Saturday, we had some people come on. So anyway, we had Ernest Emerson for the first uh, about hour of the show. Uh, starting at noon, and it was great. It was from his uh, ultimate man cave, his den, uh, the place you see him make his videos and where he records his podcast. And it's just this really great office. Uh, the The walls are lined with uh, wood reclaimed from some old barn or something like that. He's got an old thousand-year-old Viking battle axe over his shoulder and just stories to tell. And that's what we did. We, we uh, talked to him for a while. He told some some stories about coming up, and he also showed us some knives out of his vault, his very first CQC6, his very first knife, which was a Bally song, and uh, some other great knives, that that Rhino, which is the ultimate folding tactical knife. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't seen the town hall yet, which you can catch in replay on YouTube, you have to check out the Emerson Rhino. It is by far the most tactical folding knife ever. And you'll know why when you see when you see what it's all about. Uh, so we had uh, Ernest Emerson. We had Alex Steingraber, a new uh, new guy on the knife scene who's just um, uh, cap captured me and many others with his passion for uh, investigating new steels and not new steels, but investigating the properties of steels and getting really in the weeds with them and uh, also how to heat treat and uh, how to really dial all that stuff in. And uh, he's an excellent dude with a, a couple of knives, knife patterns that he's doing all this investigation on, if you will. Uh, Alex uh, came on and uh, we chatted for about, uh, oh, about a half hour. And there was a lot of shop talk. He's uh he knows what he's talking about. And then we had TJ Schwartz come on and TJ is a, a stalwart of the design world at a, at a young age. I mean, I don't even know how old he is, but uh, like probably like, well, I'm not going to speculate here, but much younger than I am. And he has designed some epic knives already. And, uh, you know, including the Koenig Arius, that was his, his, his first thing, the Zeneda, which is a knife that fits together all with dovetail joints, no screws, no, uh, no, anything else uh, like that, and uh, and then the the uh, uh, just a whole slew of other knives. So he came on uh, the Overland. That's the one I've been crazy about lately. He came on. We talked about design and his uh, expanding production capacity. So anyway, the town hall was awesome. I don't I don't mean to uh, recount every single minute of it right here, but uh, it was a blast. I please it, come and join us next time. Let me let me tell you something. Great that happened. Uh, a good friend of the show here, Edwin Callow, uh, who's got, uh, you know, he's he's the resident expert on Emerson Knives, had a chance to come on to the town hall, meet Ernest Emerson, which he was planning to do at one of the year's knife shows that was canceled, uh, and had an opportunity to tell him the story about how he helped rescue people uh, uh, stranded in a hurricane with his CQC7 in 1999. And from that day on, he knew it was all about uh, Emerson Knives. And it was really cool to see him tell that story and to see um, you know, Ernest's, Ernest Emerson's reaction and just their interaction. It was great. So definitely check out the next town hall. Hopefully we'll have Lance Abernathy on the next one. He was planned. Uh, he was rostered for this one and had a, a work uh, thing he had to he had to handle. We all know how real life comes colliding and crashing in on our uh, knife life. So Lance, uh, love to talk to you next time. 
um, uh, that's Lance Abernathy of Sniper Blade Works. So um, there you have it. Town Hall. Next, Patreon. Thank you, everybody who's uh, who's a member. And uh, uh, I just want to say that next Thursday Night Knives, we will be doing our next Gentleman Junkie. That's the $10 level giveaway uh, of a knife. Mm, still to be determined. I have a few on the... Um, I have a shelf uh, in this room that has knives that are coming in or going out. And there are a couple of there uh, that are appropriate. And so I'm going to figure out what that is. That's November 19th, Thursday Night Knives. And uh, thank you, Jim. I didn't know the date right offhand, but I shouldn't have mentioned that. Uh, so thank you, Jim. Uh, always making things work behind the scenes. Uh, November 19th, Patreon giveaway, Thursday Night Knives. Not sure what it's going to be. All right, next. Uh, this is something I'm a little nervous to talk about, but I I have to be transparent here. I've been uh, righteously talking about this No New Knives November, the moratorium I, I put on buying knives in the month of November. Well, it certainly didn't stop the flow of knives in uh, to my den here. I got to uh, 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 one viewer sent me six Rough Riders almost immediately as soon as November started, and uh, and it's been it's been going like that ever since. However, uh, yesterday and uh, well, doesn't matter what yesterday means, but 13 days in to this thing, I actually spent money on a knife. I broke it. I broke my own righteously uh, uh, created moratorium on buying new knives because. Great Eastern Cutlery came out with one and it's tiny and I love their tiny knives and it's a Warncliffe and I knew that it was just a fluke that I actually saw one in stock somewhere and uh, I let that impulsive Bob take over. Impulsive Bob took over and uh, I bought that knife. But uh, in, in, the, in the flood of guilt, that, 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 that heat that comes up in your face uh, when you feel guilty uh, during that period uh, after I pressed go and they sent the thank you and here's your, your code and all that. I thought, you know, well, <laughs> here's the only way to, to, to approximate making this right is to not open it until December. And uh, probably the, the, probably what I should do is wait till next November to open it. Um, but I'm just not there yet with my character. So we'll have to work on that. But uh, I have resolved to not do what I've been doing, which is lurk in the spots where I find out about new knives. But how am I supposed to do that? I have a podcast about it. So it's an inner battle and uh, I'm bringing <laughs> you along. So there you have it. I'm, I, I, it's a confession. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, fail. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> I love that in all caps. So he's yelling it actually fail. Anyway, I want to move on to some life knife, knife life news. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to make, I want to make good on this bad and just plow forward. So a new knife uh, brand. Yes. Coming from we knives as if they weren't making enough as if they weren't prolific enough. We Knives, who also has Civivi, which is their now midline brand, has Sencut. Sencut, it's a new brand from We, and uh, I mean, who's not excited about that? Because we watched Civivi prices and quality, not quality, I mean, the build quality has always been excellent, but we've watched the materials and pricing of Civivi creep up just ever so slightly, but still. And so they said, okay, we want to keep moving with this upward trend of Civivi and make it uh, a luxury midline brand. You know, we have our Wee Knife brand, which is definitely a luxury brand. Um, so what about uh, what about the people who still only want to pay 40, 50 bucks? Uh, so that's what Send Cut is. And uh, so they've come out with two new knives that I've seen. They're kind of dribbling them out uh, through Amazon right now. Uh, sorry for the adjective, releasing them, or verb, releasing them uh, it, uh, through Amazon right now. Uh, but soon they're expected to be as ubiquitous as Civivi and we throughout the, uh, the regular uh, uh, knife buying places online. Uh, but look at that. That looks like a wee knife. That looks like a Civivi knife. And they're going to be going with the 9CR MOV, which is apparently a, an excellent steal. I, I don't think I have any actual experience with it, um, but uh, apparently it's like a 440C or leaps and bounds above 8CR 13 MOV. And uh, so they're going to be going with that G10 uh, steel liner locks. 
and uh, you know their build and their action. It's gonna be it's gonna be good stuff. And and uh, I I respect a company that can be nimble and say, you know, oh here's our budget line, and then a few years later they're like, well, it, now here's this this is our budget line. This is our like regular line. That's what Civivi is turning into. I think it's kind of like their. Uh, well, since it's in the middle, now it's their regular line. And then if you want something super special or extra special, you lay down the extra special money and you get the fancy Wii designs. But if you notice, uh, Wii has a tendency to echo some of their more uh, iconic design features from certain knives down their line, well, into Civivi. So now it'll be down through Civivi and Sencut. So interesting. What do you think? It's kind of like... Um, well, it's not kind of like anything. It's just another player, but uh, another player from a familiar player that uh, we trust. So can't be uh, can't be much wrong with that. I look forward to checking it out. Now, the one that uh, the one that Jim had up is really cool. But if you go to uh, like good looking, uh, but if you go to the Amazon page and check it out uh, through the link on Knife News, you'll see they have another one that's uh, they have two designs out right now that you can buy. 45 bucks, I think. The other one is a really nice looking clip clip point blade uh, with a with an interesting almost pistol grip handle. Uh, but geometric and looks very comfy. So cool looking knives, great looking knives. Uh, coming from Wii, you know they're gonna be good. And if you can tolerate 9CR, um, you're in luck. All right, next uh, from Real Steel, we have another modern slip joint. This time it's from Jason Wysorkowitz. That's that's my estimation of how you pronounce his last name. And I would love to talk to this guy. Actually, it's a Jacob with a K. I think, uh, Jim, I think in my notes to you, I misspelled it. But now that I see it uh, in graphic form, um, it's with a K. He's a Polish gentleman, Pol uh, Poltergeist uh, design, uh, Blade Works, always making really, really beautiful signature style. Everything he makes looks like, looks like his style, but it's not... Uh, you know, not self derivative. Anyway, this is a slip joint. You you've got the uh, you've got the G10. You've got the back spring. You've got uh, um, sort of a well. It's a drop point. Uh, uh, this this new one, by the way, is called the Stella, and it and it comes on the heels of the Luna, which was uh, we talked about on this show a little while back, which is a little bit larger and a little less droppy of a drop point, if you will. Uh, this one here has a 2.76 inch, so two and three quarter inch blade. So it's, and it doesn't lock, so it's gonna be legal in many places around the world. But look at that blade, it's beautiful. It's a drop point. Uh, uh, let's see, Ben Schwartz over at Knife News says it's almost like a modified Warncliffe. I see that, I see that. And I think it's the fuller that makes him makes his eye think that. But to me, this almost looks like a dagger point. Uh, it almost looks like a spear point blade. So uh, very cool, interesting knife. And and I bring it up because, uh, well, you know, I'm on this, uh, I'm on this slip joint kick and these knives are interesting to me. And I would love to get this knife in particular and also the Luna and a couple of the other modern slip joints we featured here. Um, but I don't need the clip. Frankly, I don't need it to try and I don't I don't need the conveniences of a modern folder on mine. So I would probably remove this um, because these days I'm only keeping one knife clipped to me and that's my main carry. So for this, I would put it in one of those little slips, put it in my pocket, something like this and uh, let it disappear. But I love the modern materials. I love the modern take and, and Jacob uh, Wykorsowitz's, uh, uh design language on this sort of classic uh, folder. It's cool. I love it. Uh, sorry for butchering your name, sir. I'd love to talk to you on the show. If you ever listen to this, give me, uh, contact me. Uh, so this is a story that came up in two other places before here right now, but I got to talk about it. Uh, we talked about it on Thursday Night Knives last week, and we talked about it on the town hall with Ernest Emerson, and that is the new CQC-17. Pardon me. I pause for a delicious uh, sip of coffee here. So the key, CQC-17 is a new knife. It's in the Signature Series, meaning it's a very limited production. And it was announced and sold out in a matter of seconds. Well, it was announced and then sold out in a matter of seconds. Our good friend Edwin uh, of the show had one. And actually, he was the one who was able to show this off on the town hall because, uh, as Ernest uh, told us, they sold out so quickly 
he didn't even have one himself. So uh, we showed it off there. But it's a it's diminutive compared to most uh, new releases from Emerson, which hover around the three and a half to four inch blades uh, length. This is in their sort of mini category. This is uh, three and a quarter inch. And it's that beautiful razor, you know, it's reminiscent of a straight razor, uh, but with a nice point and just a great little EDC. And that's, uh, you know, a lot of Emerson knives are are uh, aimed towards a more tactical use. They're a little more weapony, but this is a, you know, kind of bona fide EDC knife, excuse me, which could definitely flex into that other uh, need if need be. But loving this thing and I really hope, um, so when we were talking about this on the town hall, I asked, uh, how do you determine whether something goes into production? You, you do these uh, uh, unique signature series releases every year. How do you determine whether or not that's going to go into production? He says, well, obviously it has to do with how it's received by the public and, you know, with how quickly this was snapped up. And I think it's not just the the Emerson collectors out there who are waiting for anything new. I also think it's uh, the Emerson uh, people who have an eye on Emerson designs, but need something a little smaller, a little more EDC friendly who snatched this up. So this thing, or at least that's what I'm hoping. I think it's going to be popular enough that they're going to want to put this into regular production and then hopefully into a larger size also. Um, I'm smitten with it, but you know, uh, it, it, Pretty much any Emerson design is preaching to the choir for me. There are a couple I don't care for. The Bulldog, it doesn't really do it for me. Uh, uh, the the Any sort of non-traditional Karambit style Karambit doesn't do it for me. But that's like a few things on the outside. I'd still take them and happily add them to my collection. So uh, Ernest Emerson uh, uh, CQC7, uh, 17, sorry, Check out the town hall, this last town hall, to listen to a story about a friend of his who bought the 17 because of a, a story it evoked in his memory from growing up in Staten Island. So cool story, great looking blade. Um, I really hope I get my hands on one in the future. All right, next, I wanna talk about uh, State of the Collection, my new knives. Yes, I know, no new knife November. I shouldn't have any of those, but uh, these were all gifts. Uh, that I'm going to talk about here and uh, gifts and or try out things like check these out. You need to check them out. Uh, products that are coming to market uh, like this first one. I'll talk first about the Snaggletooth Tactical. Uh, they have a new product, you know, Snaggletooth Tactical from their um, aftermarket pocket deployer hook that you can uh, you can remove a pocket stud on your knife, then you can put on the Snaggletooth Tactical MF. And what you do is uh, unscrew the unscrew the existing stud, put this thing on, and then you can cam it out of your pocket, much like an Emerson Wave, I'll say it. Um, I love this product. It started off uh, for cold steel knives specifically, but they have gone to uh, Basically, uh, you can put them on anything that you can remove the thumb stud. They've also made smaller versions like for this uh, uh, bug out. So I wanted to show this. I have the small one for the bug out, but I also wanted to show this. It's a new product they have called the engagement ring. And if you know Snaggletooth MF or Snaggletooth Tactical, that all of their uh, words, uh, all of their product names have a little pun to them. I like this engagement ring, but it really is an engagement ring. Uh, it helps you engage your knife, especially knives like this and uh, the Rat 2, I think this fits also. Uh, but knives like this with a deep carry pocket clip that give you very little room to grab onto the thing. Uh, if you're not a fob kind of guy, you don't want a lanyard string on there. This is a stiff engagement uh, uh, method. Uh, much like their cog ring, another little pun there, cog ring, uh, which fits onto the old uh, uh, Recon Ones and kind of turn it into a karambit, but it's a stiff ring engagement kind of a pulling device. I, I didn't need that many words, but you know what I mean. And so that's what this thing is. And so uh, Rob Penna of Snaggletooth uh, Tactical sent one over to me, and I've been carrying it on my, as you can see, on my bug out. This bug out tends to live 
in my waistband, just kind of over here on my right hip, just in case I need an extra knife, maybe something more discreet than I'm carrying in my uh, pocket and I need to pull it out. Or in, in, in an emergency, I lose my other knife, I have this one here. Well, this for in the waistband carry, especially with a deep carry pocket clip, is perfect, this engagement ring, because it's just kind of sitting there. What well, You can't see it at all because it's on my waistline. Uh, but even if it were hanging out of the pocket, it's not, it's not much to see, you know. Uh, but when I want to pull this thing out, it's right there. And then with the addition of the of the uh, Snaggletooth MF, uh, you know, engagement hook there, it just it just pops out. Now the thing you cannot do with this is this is not a karambit. You can't do really karambit techniques because it moves on this axis too. So it it is for removing. And actually, uh, I was watching Jimmy Slash's video on this. Uh, he was the first guy to get this engagement ring, and what he does is. He just kind of puts his third finger in there, pulls it out, and then has the knife in hand. Or he uses his pinky. You could do that too. But what it's not for, what it's not good for, is drawing like a karambit, automatically engaging the blade, and then doing your manipulations or whatever you're going to do to flip it and get it oriented correctly in your hand. Because of this sideways movement, It's I think it could be really dangerous to do that. So... If your natural proclivity is to grab a ring like that and to whip it out and flip it and get it, you know, engaged, it might not be the product for you. But if you're a regular person uh, and you just walk around with a uh, a deep carry clip like this, either on your Rat 2 or on your uh, bug out, this thing is awesome. I really, really like it. And then, uh, as always, uh, the engagement uh, hook is just is sweet. Now, a little note on these Snaggletooth MFs. If you're a righty and you're going to get one for your cold steel or for your bug out or for whatever, I might encourage you to get a left-handed version, even if you're a righty, because, um, so this is a left-handed version on a, you know, on a knife set up for righty, for right-hand uh, carry. But there is enough there. There is enough of this Snaggletooth uh, piece on the main side of the blade where that little, uh, where the screw is to open the knife if you wanna just slow roll it open. You don't need this. It comes with a big hex nut on the other side as a thumb stud. And actually, if you're less coordinated with your left hand, this nut works great for the left, uh, for lefty, cause it's a little big, sits a little bit more proud of the knife handle itself. And it's sharp, it'll, it'll grab your, you know, it's a, a hexagon. It'll grab your thumb well if your left thumb is less coordinated. So if you're going for a Snaggletooth uh, MF pocket deployer and you're a right handy and you're a right hander and you're going to carry your knife on your right hand side and you're going to use it in your right hand, I would still consider buying the Snaggletooth MF for left, for lefty. I like it better. <laughs> it's more comfortable on my delicate thumbs and uh, works just as well. All right. Well, there you have it. It's the engagement ring. That's what I really wanted to talk about. The engagement ring for the for the uh, bug out. I'm going to be carrying it for the next couple of weeks, and then I'm going to uh, give a review. I know Rob is interested in my in my uh, take on it, so I, I will give him that. Indeed. Uh, thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. Uh, next, I want to talk about uh, the off grid knives. Uh, well, off grid knives. I recently spoke to Kerry Orifice, who owns uh, owns and runs Off Grid Knives, and that uh, interview is coming up. And uh, very interesting story. Uh, this guy is another. Uh, I've spoken to a few recently who uh, are men of a certain age, and I got to say, they're like my age, who have decided to take their passion for knives to the next level and start a company. And they've been doing well. And so off grid knives is one of those knives. And after, uh, or is one of those companies, I got my first one in hand th through our good friend, Dave, uh, this old sword blade reviews on YouTube. He sent me a couple of donation knives to the channel to give away or to auction off or what have you. And, uh, one of them was the, um, off grid knives, sea dog version two. I don't have it here at the moment. Uh, but I, I was very impressed with the knife and knew that they had various levels of production. So I got in touch with them, ended up doing a nice, uh, great interview with uh, Kerry and uh, I'm very happy to meet him. And afterward, he sent me a package, a really generous and awesome care package 
to include a t-shirt and a hat. Love the swag, but also a couple of knives to check out. And uh, man, I'm 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 ever more impressed than the Sea Dog version two, which I really liked, like the Sea Dog, but the knives he sent me are are very refined. Now, if you don't know Off Grid Knives, it's an American company out of California. Uh, the, the guy who runs it, Kerry does all the designing. And then he has two companies producing his knives. He's got, uh, a, a, a more affordable, uh, level, uh, uh, tier made by best tech. And if you know about best tech knives, they really know how to make a knife. And, uh, so the, the less expensive ones are best tech. And then the premium it's called the elite line. They're made by we, so let me show you what he sent me. This one, uh, really, uh, well, I'll just show it. This is the Black Stallion. This is in D2. This is in this is the more affordable line. Look at that. Three uh three screw deep carry pocket clip. This is milled G10. Very, very pleasing to the hand. If you have any sort of uh tactile stem issues, you'll love this knife. Uh, it feels it feels great in hand. Um, you've got steel liners, it's a liner lock. You've got a standoff there, but look at that super broad, beautiful sheep's foot blade is what it is. I, I was calling it a Warren Cliff, and then uh, Dave actually corrected me. It's a sheep's foot blade, and it's two inches wide. Two inches wide with a one-inch saber grind on very thin stock. I'm sorry. I don't know how thin it is. Well, let's see. Eighth of it. Sixteenth uh, of it. Very thin. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those are broken up into tenths. It's like a tenth of an inch thin. What the hell is that? Anyway, it's quite thin. And uh, and this grind makes it super, super crazy thin and sharp. As you can see, I've used that tip, which is quite robust, uh, but will has been breaking into, I've been having a lot of stubborn uh, uh, clamshell packages recently. They've been just, this just devours them like it's not there. I love this knife, very thin and light and pocketable. And then it has that air of menace that I demand in any knife I carry, even if it's the simplest and most innocent of EDC knives. Uh, love this thing, The Black Stallion. The name is evocative of a movie that was popular when I was a, but a wee one. Um, next is in their elite line. This is the Scorpion. And uh, this is a very impressive knife. This is made by Wee Knives. And it's got this handle that I love because it's uh, it's ergonomic and terribly neutral at the same time. Like if you look at it, it's got all of the uh, angles in the right places, but they're angles. So it looks like it shouldn't be comfortable. And it is, oh, whew, <laughs> it's also very pointy. It's incredibly comfortable. It reminds me of a... Uh, a bit of um, uh, um, a SOCOM. It's kind of got a handle a bit like a SOCOM. And it, it just fits the hand beautifully. And I love, love that blade, that aggressive clip point, forward clip point blade. I love that. Some people might call it a reverse tanto. I say, get out of town with your reverse tanto. That's a made up word. Um, so get out of here with that. This is an aggressive forward clip point, And I love it. It's a S35 VN, very, very sharp. I've been carrying this uh, for the past few days. And the interesting thing about it is I've been kind of off of titanium frame lock flippers lately. And this has rekindled that love. By the way, look at that swedge. Look at this blade. It's a beautiful blade. Evocative to me of a LCC uh, from the early 2000s. And, um, and I know that's, I'm pretty sure that's not what he was, considering but i love that uh, this sort of shape and to me that's what it's evocative of this is just an excellent excellent knife um deep carry pocket clip this here i thought was going to be an issue having the uh that well that's carved out to create the lock bar so close to where the clip meets the uh meets the uh handle that sometimes can be an issue when you try and tug it out of your pants and you have a thick seam but on this knife it's positioned just at the right angle and just on uh, off of that surface that it doesn't it doesn't bind up at all. I, I have an issue with that with some some of my a couple of my absolute favorite knives have an issue with the bunching 
right there with the clip interface with the handle and that uh, carve out there. And that's not an issue here. Visually, I thought it would be. Really, really awesome knife. So if you like the design, you know uh, we has an excellent uh, track record for building awesome knives. I love that uh, jimping there too. Beautiful knife. And then lastly, uh, Off Grid is doing a, uh, well, I guess they're doing two fixed blades, uh, but, uh, but Carrie sent me this. It's called the Alpha Dog. Did you hear that? Alpha Dog. Look at this thing. So this is an absolute uh, brute. It's a quarter inch thick slab of K110, which I'm told is analogous to, I don't remember what it was. We were just talking about it on Thursday night and I have someone mentioned it. Jim, if you can remember uh, and pull it up, that'd be awesome. But I can't remember what they said. Um, D2, I think it's analogous to D2. Or something uh but this thing is beautiful it's heavy feels so good in the hand it reminds me a little bit of a um camp version of the raja 3 folder from cold steel it looks like a it's kind of like a kukri that's been squashed a bit except you don't have the recurve you don't have to worry about a recurve sharpening a recurve some people worry about that i don't uh you have that nice straight there you have this beautiful belly. This would be awesome for, I'm told, for hunting, uh, for for skinning game. Uh, never done that before, but that blade looks like it would be decent for that. And uh, splitting wood, whatever you want to do outdoors with this thing, uh, it's it's a pretty tremendous knife. I have not used it yet, but I plan on uh, banging it through some wood. <laughs> I plan on batoning it through some through some logs to make kindling for the uh, for the fire pit tonight. So we'll see how this works out. I'm sure it's going to work incredible. I mean, it feels amazing in hand. Also, uh, on this G10 handle, you've got these really cool divots here that you'll find in a lot of outdoorsy knives. If you're planning on holding it in this way for, I don't know, carving stuff, you know. I can't, I can't speak to bushcraft, but it seems like it's bushcraft ready. This thing is heavy, uh, so you got to be ready for a heavy knife. But to me, that's part of its charm because you get a lot of chopping power in this relatively long handle and this very short blade. So if you were to put a lanyard here and you know make it, make it something that wraps around the back of your hand and then cho choke back halfway down this handle, which is pretty generous, there's enough weight in this thing, and this is a broad and wedgy enough blade uh, that you could definitely do some serious uh, kind of chopping with this. Serious for a knife, chopping. Um, yeah, I mean, that's my thoroughly unscientific and unexperienced uh, uh, prognosis. Love this thing. So uh, look for videos to come on, on this, uh, on these three knives from Off Grid Knives. Lastly, uh, something that came in for, uh, <laughs> it's something that came in during No New Knife November was a, uh, well, a delayed purchase, if you will. I was gifted something that uh, I, I, I wasn't exactly gifted, but, but the price I was given was a gift. And the fact that it exists and came to me was a gift. And that is the beer and sausage. You know, I've been obsessing about getting... Uh, a Great Eastern cutley, Cutlery beer and sausage in either the bone or the micarta handle, but really any would have done. And uh, good buddy Mike uh, Mike Latham from CollectorKnives.net uh, sent me a text, said, I've got one. Do you want it? And he said, I'll give it to you for this price. And it was a very, very nice price. And I said, why, yes, of course. And he said, I'm going to send it to you, but don't send me a check until December 1st. I want to make sure that you're maintaining your integrity. And I said, thank you. Thank you for helping me maintain my integrity. Little did I know I would self-sabotage just a few days later, but uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to make that right. Anyway, the beer and sausage, this, um, this micarta, um, canvas micarta handle is, has a very, very textured, nice texture to it. Like, 
Like it's grippy. And if this got wet, it would be extra grippy. It's, it does not have a polish on it. It's, uh, it's really pleasing to the hand. Uh, there you got that beer and sausage shield. You've got the uh, grooved bolsters with the brushed finish. Um, beautiful spear point. I'm not always the, the biggest spear point fan, but if I'm going to have a spear point, I want it to look like that. With that beautiful machine ground swedge, the long pull, and uh, I like the way they do their etch. It's one of those etches that comes off with use. And, 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 and if you don't plan on using it, it's great to have it there to commemorate what it is. But if you do plan on using it, I like that it goes away with, you know, one polishing, basically. Um, I don't think I'm going to use this one because this is a novelty. Um, but I'll show you the rest of it. You know the rest of it, but in case you've been in a dark place. And I just want to pretend that this is brand new to everyone. Over here, oh, look at that. Yeah, so once you've cut your sausage with that knife, you can pick it up off of the paper plate with that fork. And then uh, when they come around with beer, you can open it. So this is kind of a hipster knife. To me, it actually reminds me of a place I used to go when I lived in Brooklyn uh, called Radagast. It was a beer garden and they had sausage, like a, a place where you could go get sausage and you just sit at these long Valhalla tables and drink beer and eat sausage. It was awesome. This would have gone really well back then. So we got that, we got that. And then when you're done, you can comb out your hipster beard with that. Oh, I got a little... Uh, some crumbs, some crumbs over here. And this is called the Beard Refuse Removal Tool, BRR Tool. Also an etch that will come out easily. It's got that little pick at the end that helps you open it up. But I'm also wondering, like, if you sharpen it, it could be a toothpick. Uh, but I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to I'm gonna keep it in pristine shape and just kind of pull it out to use it. Uh, I mean, pull it out to show it off every once in a while. But look at <laughs> the comb here is sharp. I am, when I grow a beard in the winter, I like to comb it because it feels good to kind of itch that skin underneath. And uh, if you do that too hard with this, you'll bleed. But uh, great knife. Mike, thank you so much, sir. What a what an awesome, awesome gift. This is on the, well, it's not a gift, but kind of a gift with that price you gave me. This is on the 35 frame, by the way. So I'm putting an open call out there to anyone who in December or beyond will have I'm looking for a Churchill. Uh, that is, uh, I think, the last time GEC ran the 35. That's an equal-ended cigar uh, jack knife. Uh, they ran one called the Churchill. It had on one side a sheep's foot, and then the main blade was a was a, a clip point. And just, I never got it. I think it was on a single spring, but I could be mistaken. Never got it. Always looked at it, and now it's just not an option. And and I wish I had gotten that. So. It's an open call. Anyone who has a Churchill uh, who thinks they might want to get rid of it, let me know. I'd be happy to uh, consider it. All right. Well, that uh, just about brings us to the end of this uh, edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast Wednesday Supplemental Edition. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on and and joining and listening and just being a part of this. It's It's been so much fun for me. Uh, and, you know, it's been an enriching thing to meet not just uh, the people who are making these knives and designing them and coming up with them, but all of you who have reached out um, uh, to me, who are fans of this show, who are just fans of knives and listen to the other knife podcasts and watch all the reviewers and all that. Um, we all love you. Thank you for everything you do. And uh, well, that's it. So this is Bob DeMarco thanking Jim behind the behind the switcher for working his magic as usual. And uh, I just want to say have a great week and uh, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.